Hi, welcome back to the course. Uh, the next one is Meditation 1, Imagination, and I think it is necessary to point out that what is meant by meditation here is very different from what is practiced in terms of Oriental meditation. Imagination is the first characteristic and the ability to control thought which is acquired through the practice of concentration is a precondition for the practice of the exercise. This exercise consists of evoking the subject being meditated in the imagination but as clearly and as precisely as possible. The subject may be a text that is specifically prepared for the purpose and there are various texts by Rudolf Steiner, Massimo Scalider or George Kulevind which are certain examples or else it can be a natural phenomenon such as an earthquake, a volcano, a storm, thunder and lightning or a traditional text such as the first verses of St John's Gospel, the Our Father or even a person known to us and who is imagined at the height of their personal potential shining in the light. In a similar way, works of art can also be meditated. Having thus worked on and imagined the subject imagined in meditation, this imagination is allowed to resonate of its own accord within our soul, our inner being so that it reveals its own true being of itself and that way it can work upon us. Again, the duration is a minimum of five minutes. You should make every effort to answer the following question to yourself. That which manifests after the work of imagination, in what way is it more precise and more powerful than ordinary imagination. The comment is, the technique can be carried out by adding to or by stripping away the sense elements of thought as in the first stage of concentration. The effects are then left to act on us in a manner similar to in the second stage of concentration. Subjects for meditation are supposed to be chosen carefully. Since they will act upon our inner being, it is advisable to choose something in which the spirit reveals itself as directly as possible. And that means as ethically as possible. At the end of the exercise of meditation, it's important to stop all interference on everyday consciousness by the activity we have just carried out. This is necessary so that our everyday awareness, which we need for practical tasks, is not weakened. At the same time, the subject evoked will then have a deeper effect beyond what is accessible to our everyday consciousness without its being diminished by the normal tiredness which comes through over-intensive practice. At first, it's best not to go beyond a 5 or 10 minute duration. Then, after many years of practice, it is difficult to go beyond a half hour without losing intensity of work. And it is the intensity that is the desired result rather than length. Length merely represents useless difficulties and is therefore ineffective. The aims here are intensity and liveliness. It should be alive to us. This should lead us to a potential intensification of all thinking which we can live through in the depths of our being. Variations at first, the exercise demands withdrawal from the hubbub of everyday life during the period needed in order to perform it. But after some practice, you can try meditation out in circumstances where only partial withdrawal is possible, such as, for example, by closing your eyes on public transport. But this cannot really be recommended as it tends to instruct the aims of precision and depth. And that will do for the time being as an initial introduction for meditation. 
and uh, look forward to the next lesson.